Hey guys, Ryan Gill here with Hunt Primitive, where we entertain, educate, and inspire. And on this channel, we do a lot of primitive build and or hunting videos, kind of like this one. Uh, so if it's your first time to the channel, do please consider subscribing. In today's video, we really want to focus on the education side of this. And unfortunately, there's a very good chance that we're gonna get age restricted. But I really hope that that's not the case because this is really important for historical and archeological education. If you all watched the video that we posted last week, and I'll drop a link down in the description so you can go watch that, where we went and we took a bison with contextual primitive hunting implements, this is the video where we're actually going to break down that entire bison with nothing but Stone Age tools. What's really amazing is when we talk about using Stone Age tools and processing animals, you know, down into food resources and hide and sinew and bones and all that kind of stuff, we think that it takes a ridiculous amount of time or a lot of hands. And what we really show in this video that I'm really excited to share with you all is that we had three primary guys and then a fourth that would swap in and out. And between, let's just say, three and a half or four guys, we were able to completely disarticulate debone all the meat and harvest resources off of this bison in less than two hours with nothing but Stone Age technology. And that's really the end result of having not only equipment that is really built for the task, but also having hands on the animal and on the equipment that really know what they're doing. So this should probably go without saying, but viewer discretion is advised. This is something I probably wouldn't watch with the kids around per se, or people that could have a sensitive stomach. And also, towards the end of the film, a fair warning, we uh, are a little bit punchy at that point because we're pretty well exhausted. And not only that, but we're still having a great time. And uh, there's definitely uh, some language and certain references that start to fly and a little bit of blooper stuff kind of at the very end of the film that's probably not appropriate for all audiences, but hey, it's just guys doing what guys do. So anyway, I uh, hope you enjoy the process. Probably right about here. Okay, that's good. Yep. Yeah, that makes sense. Let me see where all right, incision need, flakes. Yep, you need incision flakes and stone knives and everything else. At least from the last one, what I noticed was the, the best was you got to kind of part the hair a little bit. Once you just get it started, use the knife because yeah. it's just it's just basically in and you don't have to do the entire incision with it. We good? Yep. Oh yeah, go for it. I build the pleat on this hide really quick. Oh yeah. that please yeah we're probably pretty solid here. look watch this come over here and look at this once you get it in this knife it's literally just gonna split this thing like crazy that's why the hafted knife is just so much better where he's like no hafted knives not you know needed or what man makes a world of difference it took us so long to do the incisions with flakes on the last one because they the edge depletes super right. fast. You want me to hold it up? Yeah, will you hold that yep, real quick? Hold it. Put your fingers yep. there. Okay. Ryan. Yep. You want me to you want me to slice up here? Yeah. Like on the front side, back side. Uh, back probably. I just 
laying it back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just clear it kind of down to where I was at, and then we'll mm -hmm. come down. Boy, I bet you would have loved to have this in the man in the up north. Oh yeah, yep. Be un would have been unbelievable. Yeah. While you're talking, uh, or while you're doing this, obviously you don't mention the particular names where we get in trouble with stuff. Yeah. But uh, while you're working there, tell Jim about your. Jim will get up close and <clears throat> tell him about your experience up there working on a moose. Last time I skinned a large game animal with uh, stone tools, you know, we're dealing with a uh, much different quality of, of rock, uh, dealing with more slate than uh, actual high silicon content chert. So, uh, not gonna, not holding an edge, you're having to resharpen much, much more, and just not really, uh, you know, being able to sharpen it to the level that it's gonna perform near as good. Um, made the job that much more difficult, not impossible, but definitely that much more difficult time consuming and energy. Uh, there's a lot of energy consumption, or I'm sorry, expenditure, you know, in, uh, in that as well. And frustration as well, you know, that was taking so long, you know, and you're dealing with a lot of, you know, predators, you know, as well. So you really want to get that animal skinned out. But yeah, much, much different situation, you know, in doing it there. Yeah, folks that aren't using hafted knives don't know what they're missing. I know that it's kind of primitive romantic to just be like, oh, we just, flakes are the best thing, it's the sharpest edge. And it's like, you're right, it's the sharpest edge. But it also depletes the fastest. These serrated knives. Well, just, just, having, clean, the, just having the ability to clean them out, exactly. Yeah, right. what you're about to say. This goes out. right back to what it was, where the flake just continuously dulls. And having that handle, I mean, look at that, that's insane. Just having that handle for well, leverage. Well, it, it also I brings a, a sense of, uh, uh, you know, send a them normalcy because you normally ha handle a knife with a handle, so it makes it feel that much more normal right. as well. Yeah. Absolutely. So we'll keep working this way, so we can. Yeah, pull I can't. It I up. can't. I can't pull any more. Right. So we got to work to that leg, and then flip the leg to me or the, the hide because I can't go any further up here. Okay. Because I'm running. See, I'm, I'm stopping there. Right. Because I gotta. That right there is how artifacts get lost, though. Oh, yeah. Or how tools get lost and become artifacts. And I think it's awesome. That's agatized coral. It's pretty, but it works even better. Now, when I killed the bison with the Atlatl two years prior, we had a kind of some subpar tools that we were working with at the time and didn't quite have the drive to get that one processed out in the same way that we did this one. And so heading into this, I already knew that hafted, and by hafted I mean blades set into wooden handles, was absolutely the way to go. When we always think that, well, blades that are just clean broken with a single sharp edge are the absolute sharpest knives there are and it truly they truly are however your hands working with smuts such small abstract blades over a period of time it really slows you down and also that super sharp single fine edge depletes very very quickly whereas when you have a hafted knife like this one the serrations really aid in cutting and as the serrations get full of membrane and flesh you simply clean the serrations out with your thumb and it's ready to work again so this is one that I actually used in the video you'll probably recognize it and so it's a piece of agatized coral and it's a little bit more of a fancied up version on the website huntprimitive.com we actually call this the deer skinner but obviously you can use them to skin anything it's just a model name and then the bison skinner that we have is named after the knives that we used in the first bison film uh, which really were an asset and I wish we would have used them much earlier but they're more of kind of a primitive version of this knife where they're not quite as pretty to look at per se. But either way the form and the function is pretty much exactly the same. Ooh, I got you, huh? yep. 
extra hands definitely helps, doesn't it? Oh yeah. I gotta clean the gun. Okay. Beauty. Beautiful. Yeah, I'm running out of it's just stretching. I can't right. do much yeah, with I'll it. Probably really. roll the leg back yep. and then yep. get finished that Watch off. Your, you know, ring this <clears> in, so yep, yep. Pull with it with its shoulder. Oh, man, it's it is. I hate front shoulders. I really oh, do. It's bad. Yeah. A lot of good meat right there, honestly. Yeah, the, the flank is mm -hmm. real thick on it. You deboning it as you go? Yeah. For the most part. Cut some of this off. That shoulder. Yeah, I'm literally just using Things my hand. Massive. It's just coming right out. I'm just yep. walking my hand up there. Yep, yep. Stand on that meat group. That's nice how they Beautiful. Lay on, they're laying on top of one. So it's a lot easier to force them out. One, one piece right there. Probably get to a point where we'll see where we're at, but I'm, we'll probably have to <coughs> sacrifice the beer cooler. That right there, that's cool stuff. That is and cool. That, yeah. Look at that meat. Yeah. You can do it. I'm pretty amazed, I gotta say, because uh, cutting up deer at home with metal knives, I thought this was gonna take way longer. And speed wise, it's about the same. I mean, I'm, I'm saying that the stone's doing pretty much everything that a metal knife will. Just not quite as, as sharp and clean. Right. It's a rough. It's cut. a little more jagged, but it's hanging in there, man. Oh yeah. I mean, we're we're really making some time on this thing. Stone knives that are hafted like this and also have two cutting surfaces, very, very important. You know, oftentimes when we look at a modern knife like this one, which just is, you know, one of the more modern hunt primitive skinners that uh, actually Jason in the film. He's the one that makes these at Hobo Forge Survival, and what a phenomenal, more modern skinning knife. But you can see we have one edge that we're using, and, you know, just that's your typical modern knife shape, right? So when people think stone knives, more times than not, what oftentimes we look at is having a handle and then having a blade with one single cutting surface. But in the reality with Stone Age technology, it's way more important to have a diagnostic type of lithic, you know, with a certain base that you use over and over and over, but it has two symmetrical edges. And I'm not saying everyone in the archeological record has two symmetrical edges. However, the vast majority of knives that you see will have two symmetrical edges. So this way, after you use one side and it's depleted, instead of having to stop and resharpen, you simply just use the other side of the knife. And you, a lot of times you're not consciously saying, let me only use this side until it's depleted. You just pick the knife up and you just use it and it just naturally gets used on both sides. And then when you start using one side and this edge is pretty depleted, you try the other side. If it still cuts good and if it doesn't, then you're like, okay, well, it's time to resharpen. Then you go through and take a new edge of flakes off or a new row of flakes off the edge and now it's sharp again and it's ready to work. And we just took that it. leg up. Yeah, it would, man. Get Trying to fight the clock. Did I just jug you? Yeah, I'll pull, nope. I'll try to pull I, I dodged it. <laughs> I was out of there. Yeah. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. That's, yep. Yep. That's a slab right there. Yep. I 
<clears throat> you get more meat on this shoulder than a deer. Oh yeah. They're like a whole deer. Yeah, really. And I can separate those two muscle groups. Thank you guys for all your help with this. Absolutely. Yeah, dude. Just about. Hey, you, where else, you want me to leave Ooh. the Achilles tendon attached to this meat? Um, so you can cart, you know, cut it off later, that way it's all together. <clears throat> When you yeah, that's, process it, it's probably better yeah, to do just, it that way. Yeah, whether you take it from the, yeah. Bend it all the way back that way. It's trying to have the last Right, come back here. Yeah. Keep bending. All right. Is that for sinew yeah. later? Yeah, pound that out for for sinew. And there's, there's more down here, but we'll saw those saw those bones off I would imagine and strip that out but it's just if you keep attached to the meat it's there when you're when you're ready for it okay let's see we got a muscle group right here get this little one off we can just throw this in the trailer okay got it beauty thank got you it. Yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna try to do that and not lose my digits. Jason, you want to just once you get that piece off, just show me the blade. Yep, yep. Yeah, so this blade still, man, I've I've been using it for a while now, and it's still just slick as can be. I think a lot of it is just having the same cognizance you would have with using a steel knife and not uh, and not hitting bone with it you know so you, know, you hit bone with stone you hit bone with a with steel you're going to dull your edge so just you know using the same concepts you can really then just clean it out like that and you're right back in business with that sharp edge you know if you hit you can see where i hit a little bone here and chip that tooth but still it's got you know plenty of uh, t good serrations on there and I can run my finger across it and I cut myself because I'm not really putting a lot of pressure down but as soon as you bear down with this and put the pressure on you got that uh, good cutting edge I grab a hold of that before because I'm yeah. fixing to dump yeah, it in the yeah, dirt yeah, yeah. hand slipping thank you yep we'll cut that one off right there thank you yep. go uh, yes, right. go that Let's way right there yeah, just go that way hold on hold on Keep twisting. Reduce right there. Right there. Hold on. Hit and, hit and bone. Go back the other way. Right there. There we go. Got it. Oh yeah. Nice. What's up? It's burger time. Yeah. This is about as nasty as I'm probably going to get, is that? Okay. Hold on, real quick. Oh my god. Let me show real quick. Oh, thanks. Okay. Did you yank on that a second? Yep. Give me some tension there. Right. Yep. That's what we're talking about. That's what we're talking about. There you go. <laughs> nice. Or lower. <laughs> so it looks like a shack shack. <laughs> oh, jeez. 
<laughs> don't let it, don't Having fun yet? Hefty, hefty piece of meat there. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, you meant the, yeah. Yes, I, well, it depends. <laughs> depends. <laughs> and now I got it. Yeah, I, you're a boomer, yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh. Probably as close to the neck as I really Coming need. down right, watch your hand, baby. He's going, okay. he's going. So. Membrane, I'm not sure. <laughs> I think it might be still membrane. I think it is. I don't think that's the stomach. I mean, it's right on the other side of this, though. Yeah, it's a very thin you know, uh, deal here. I think once we clear oh, these, this, yeah, these all just... come out in one pouch. It's not like a hog or something where you have food. Okay, this is rich. come out in one. Okay, that's good to know. Like stays in one big sack. Sure. <laughs> there we go. Now we're through. There. Look at that. Yeah. Now we're through it. Are you you I'm keeping the tripe? Who? <laughs> I don't want that honeycomb <laughs> tripe. You can throw that <laughs> away, buddy. No, not me. That's Jim. No. That's that menudo <clears throat> for Jim, buddy. Heck no. No. I'm Jim. trying not to let it out. Blow that yeah. up. But it's hard to. I'm trying to keep it back. Collateral damage. Yeah. How sharp that is. Yeah. Still, after all of this, I'm just barely touching it. Yeah. Can get in there at all. Dude. It's going good. <laughs> We're getting into the good smelling now. Cut too much back here. Some more room to see. Yeah, basically, I would cut it right up that, yeah, around yeah, yeah, That's what I'm doing around the ribs. Yeah, exactly. That way, then all you gotta do is <clears throat> knock yep. the ribs back, break them, and score them, and pop them out. Yep. All right, I need to cut that membrane in there. I'm coming up. Give me some tension there. There we go. How are you with organs? What do you mean? You know, do you like liver? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah liver. I like heart's probably my favorite. Okay. You didn't expect you were gonna get in here with stone knives today, did you? <laughs> no, I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gummed up. Thing getting slippery. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. There you go. You get all that lung blood, man. Or as we like to call it, the animal soul. That's what we, we get into this chamber here, we need to start watching for stone points come rolling out. But later. thumb through it. <clears throat> yep, first shot did hit a lung. I'm gonna try to maybe help you pull on that. Yeah, side. I was about to say that may be a good yeah. idea. I'm gonna try to cut All right, on you the pull and I'm, I'm pulling. No, him. Oh, I got you. You're good. I think it, yeah, right where I grab a hold of that. Yep. Uh, there's a one through a flip. Mm -hmm. I bet you that was the last shot. Oh, it feels, it feels stone tight. Oh, good. You got one? Yeah. In the spine. Oh, it's a part of the lung right here. Oh. Cool. Yep. Pull that out. There it is. Get a picture of that, Jim. It's about ready to go. Uh, yeah. Can you get in there more? Yeah. yeah. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh, yep. careful. There you go. Can you get a shot of that, Jim? I, I'm a, yeah, I got it. Yeah. Yep. Go ahead, and, go ahead and pull it out. That's uh. That wasn't the first one, I don't think. I don't think that was actually the third. Let me get my back under here. What is that? Esophagus, is it? I don't know how we're up there, that, yeah. It's, it's that part right there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Follow that. Beauty. It's going up in the ass right there.
There you go. Joe's an animal. He was the right man for this job. That's right. This is like Joe's territory. Love it. Actually, the ass would be, but. Yeah. I'll take it. <laughs> I'll take it. I'll take it. Yeah, uh, guys got it so handled, I'm walking around trying to figure out where to get in. <laughs> and y'all are just killing it. Pull, Joe. Yeah, that's gonna be a tough one getting that out. Actually, we as long as we don't cut the piss sack, you don't have to cut that out back there. We can just cut right across the intestine. Right here. Yeah. Yeah, we don't need as long as we don't cut through a piss sack. We're fine. Can we cut through that? That's what's holding it. Yeah, here. Somebody get in there. He's climbing. Where's it at? Cut, whoa, 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 cut back here, come back. Oh, there you go. Okay, it's cool. out. There, now we got diaphragm, lungs, heart. Yeah. Good. Break these ribs off. That's through it. There's yeah. the break. other side. Yeah, it's in there. Probably is. Is it in that stomach shit yeah, or something? I think it is. I really don't care about that obsidian point. Right so I can, can you pull your legs back through here? There we go. Yep. Now we're talking. Yep. So you break the ribs back now. Now you can. Now they're broke. Now you can just score them with the with the stone knife. Come across here and just score them down. And take all those ribs out. Once you broke them. There you go. Right, here it comes. All right. Hold up. So that's the fast way to you take ribs out with a stone tool right there. And you get. Oh man, that's awesome. <laughs> So you just, you clean, you clean down a rib, go to the sternum, break the sternum, then you just fold it back yeah, till they like, snap, yeah. score them, and they come right out. That's yeah, awesome. Awesome. And now you have access to Lone's Heart. Another really interesting thing to keep in mind with this project is after you do any sort of hunt like this where you're putting on a lot of miles, you're on your feet, there's a lot of stresses that go in and out with it, like emotional stresses within the hunt. Um having an animal down and dealing with it. And that stuff is hard to convey unless you've been in that situation. But even the excitement, the adrenaline rush of getting something down on the ground and having success, but then coming back off of it is really draining. And this is where one of those situations where we're working this animal down ourselves and we're absolutely exhausted from the day's events. But honestly, that doesn't really matter because we just have to do the job and have to get it done because there's nobody coming to just save us and do it for us. But when you really look at it from a historical viewpoint, a lot of times the women are the ones in many different early cultures that they come in and they will do all of this work. They'll do the skinning and the butchering and articulation while the men either kind of sit and relax or eat. And then also the men would be the ones that would protect the kill from the scavengers or the predators that are coming to try to steal it from you. So when we start talking about, say, early gender roles, and that's obviously a very touchy subject today, and it's not that, okay, we killed it, now it's your job as a woman to, to, to take care of it and uh, bust it up and cook it and then clean up the mess. It's not, it doesn't necessarily work like that. It's the fact that the men will go out and put on the miles and be exhausted and go make the kill, and then the women show up going, we are so thankful that we have the meat. You guys rest because we may need to protect this kill later from scavengers. We're going to take over and we're going to process it out. And that's where the gender role typically comes into play. And that's not necessarily something that we look at today and draw a lot of correlating lines because uh, we live in a totally different society. But there's that feeling of after you've put in everything that you have to accomplish this hunt and get an animal down, to have somebody come in that has your back, they show up, they drop toolkit, and they do all of this work for you, it really is a team effort. And unfortunately, we didn't have that. We did the hunt and we did the work afterwards, so we are absolutely smoked. But it just goes to show that not every situation that you're in, you're going to be able to just wait for somebody to come take care of it for you. So you have to be able to hunt all day, track, kill, and then completely take care of it yourself before nightfall. Just interesting perspective because there's no black and white answers to, well, men did this and women did this. And sometimes men had to do it all and sometimes women did way more than the men did. And it's kind of interesting to just see that 
you can't necessarily just say, well, I did my job and I'm out and then we're going to wait for somebody else. Sometimes you do have to take the, uh, you know, the bison by the horns and get the job done. We talk about being able to process an animal and even protect it against predators and scavengers. And of course, in this situation, if you watch the film that we're on a 1500 acre ranch, and I really hope that you do go back and watch the initial film of, of shooting the bison, but uh, we obviously don't expect to have any issues with bears or lions or hyenas or any of that kind of thing. So we're processing it through basically just fighting the clock before darkness. But we also want to paint that picture as if we are under time constraints and we need to get this job done and use the most efficient tools and techniques possible. And we never really expected this to happen. And I've never seen this personally before, but we actually had two sow wild hogs come in that wanted to eat the kill and I have hunted hogs pretty much my entire life and I have never seen I've seen some brazen hogs without a doubt and I think the fact is that we hit it at probably the perfect time of year where these sows had pretty much given birth and they were suckling uh, young ones and so they were kind of desperate for nutrients and that meat to uh, sustain their own bodies and sometimes I think when you have animals that they need that they also knew we were focused on this bison and tearing it down and it was crazy that they came in looking to get scraps and they were hanging out abnormally close and I've never seen that happen before but I think they were desperate for the food but they also knew that we were looking or our, we, our focus was on our job and they were there to clean up the mess. And I mean, if we turn around and run at them, they would take off, but they would come back also. It was amazing. I've never seen anything like that. But that's exactly how it would be. That's just wild hogs in this area. But that's exactly how it would be if this were hyenas or jackals or coyotes or wolves. Is once they're onto it, they're going to be around. So although it's not exactly the same, it kind of gives it the, the idea of what, what you're kind of up against. We couldn't leave that bison on the ground. We talked about it. We thought about, well, if we don't get it finished tonight, we'll just come back in the morning and take care of it. Once we saw that these hogs were like, no, we're going, we're going to eat this. When you're gone, we knew we had to get it done. So it kind of gave us a really interesting perspective that is somewhat comparable. Obviously not quite as dangerous as having a bunch of hyenas or lions surrounding you, but just knowing that you better finish the job or you may not get to finish the job and you're going to lose a lot of resources. We got another piece coming, Joe. Oh, all right. Yep. yep. Now, let's see. Better way to do it. Not right. sure. There we go. Yeah. Perfect. Thanks, guys. I think, that's, that. the, I think that's the about the last of the yeah. meat in it. Yep. Tiny bit. Except for the neck. Yeah. yeah I mean, tiny bit meat. over here. Yep. That's, that's about that's it. Clean. Let's get this head taken off, All right. and then we'll. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let's cut through here. We cut down to find the spine, mm -hmm. right here. It's right there. Yeah. Get some of that blood meat. Get some of that. Scatty blood. Some of that scatty blood meat. Actually, I think that's the trachea, not yeah, the spine, that's, that's so we're good. Gotta go, yeah. This is a... Uh, I flipped it over. Cricoid membrane, that's where they do crikes yeah. for, to drop in a tube. Yeah. Huh. A breathing tube. <clears throat> this guy's probably too gone. Yeah, I don't know. Can we get him back? I think we could try. We could. If we can get him back, we don't have to pay, right? <laughs> yeah, we're gonna revive. I think now's the time. <laughs> there it is, found it. We found, found it. it. Wing yeah. nut. Found it. <laughs> Done deal right there. Done deal. You keep doing your thing. There you go. Yeah. The last surviving. Yeah, let's try to. There it is. We got it. <clears throat> Beauty. 
I'm gonna pick that thing up. Okay, okay. buddy. <laughs> well, maybe I'll need help. <laughs> yeah, okay, let's start. All right, yeah, that's cool. Sweet. Okay, so we <sighs> <laughs> Will the hogs eat that up? No, they'll eat everything off of it, and what they don't eat, the buzzards eat. So there were really times within trying to take this animal apart that we are absolutely exhausted just from the whole day, getting really hammered with the sun, and all we really wanted to do was quit. But we just know that you just can't, we, we can rest after it's dark. We just have to get the job done. And uh, we really just had to dig deep. And Joe McConnell and, and even Jason both, there was times where I wanted to quit really, really bad. And uh, there was times I think that Jason wanted to quit. And there was times that Joe wanted to quit. And we just wouldn't let each other quit. It's like as soon as I started being like, you know, maybe we shouldn't do this. Then Jason's like, yeah, yeah no, we're doing it. And we're going to get it done and we're not going to quit. So there's no sense in even talking like that. And then there's times where Jason's like, well, maybe if we just do this and we can stay here and, you know, take a break. And then Joe's like, no, man, we're not doing that. We're going to get the job done. So having that integral uh, tribe is really really important that not only are you guys all hyper focused on getting the job done but you're also inspiring and driving the other people to step up to the occasion because nobody wants to be the one that quits and says that's it I'm done everybody just wants to get the job done and that is oftentimes the difference between life and death in the early environment because there is no quit when your family needs this meat so again, even I find it incredibly inspiring looking back on, you know, three and a half to four guys working this bison from whole animal down to completely deboned meat, skinned off, disarticulated joints and leg bones and everything that we wanted to keep. Nothing was left except for spinal column and the guts that we didn't want. We saved the meat, the hide, sinew, organs that we wanted. We took absolutely everything that we could possibly use. And we knocked all of that off the carcass in less than two hours with nothing but Stone Age tools. And even to me, I find that absolutely unbelievable. All right, so in the new book that I talked about, especially in the last video, I mean, it's 423 pages of absolutely in-depth primitive archery uh, experience and data collection. And of course, we talk about all the bison stuff in the book, but you knew there's no way that I was going to allow this book to come out without actually going pretty in-depth on stone knives in the book. So I quite literally have a chapter about not only the bison hunt, but also disarticulating and deboning the bison and talking about stone knives and how their form and function actually works best. So if you are into stone knives and working through animals with Stone Age tools and technology, great chapter in the book about that. So do please check that out as well at HuntPrimitive.com. All right, guys, that's going to be it for today. And I really appreciate you following along with it. And I tell you, it really does take a tribe of really great guys to come together to be able to work together and disarticulate an animal like this. Not just the tearing down the animal, but the hunt as you saw in the previous video is you have to have a solid core of people in your corner that are able to really come to help, especially when you're talking about working animals as large as a bison. So I hope that we were able to share something with you today that you both found uh, entertaining and educational and of course, inspirational. So thanks for following along. And until next time, I guess we'll just catch you on that next adventure. Cool. I Here slept. he looks like Manson. I slipped. Yeah. Oh yeah. Big time. If, if Charles Manson and Rasputin. Rasputin. I slipped. I slipped in the bathroom. I slipped, I slipped yeah. and fell into a girl on her period. Look at me. I slipped. Yeah, Guys, we did it. What else? What's yeah, next? Can you see him going to the fuck? <laughs> to get a little <laughs> I want to leave it painted He's, like this yeah oh that's the best way to do it yeah, yeah it looks great mm -hmm. yeah, I'm yeah. not that dirty you actually should wear that on the flight home